welcome to New York City. I'm back in the park again. And sorry about the delay. It's been a lot of things going on with my computer. But we're going to be doing the Z rods and the Z axis today. I had a lot of gotchas on my belt, so that's why there was a delay with the belt. I thought this was going to be a really easy video to make. I was going to do the Z rods, the Z axis, do the gantry, boom, I'm done. Guess what? It wasn't that smooth and it wasn't that easy. This video is taking me like 12 days to do. But I had computer issues, I had other problems that was going on. Adobe sucked this week. I had chip problems with my uh, chip readers. So why is the Z axis important? All right, let's talk about the Z movements. First, you have the Prusa. The bed moves on the Y back and forth, and then the gantry moves on the X and then on the Z going up. The problem with the bed moving back and forth is when you have a big object on it, you know, it can shake because you have all this momentum, so you want to keep it light. So then you have things like the Voron, where the bed is totally stationary, and the gantry has the X movements, the Y movements, and the Z movements all built in one. And then you have the Rat Ray, where everything's on the gantry except for the Z, and that moves up and down. I don't know why some of these printers have to move each corner super fast. I mean, the Z axis should be the slowest because the faster you move, the more chance you have layers uh, moving and you want to do 0 0.02 movements on your Z coming down. You don't need fast movements. Even if your bed's on level, you know, you don't need to move fast. You're not printing on a hill. You don't need your Z to move fast. You want it to move as slow as possible, unlike the X and the Y. The X and the Y was going to do all your printing. You want that thing to be high speed, but not your Z. Your Z, you want to move slowly down, slowly down, slowly down, because you're doing layers. Your Z is what does the layers. There's no reason why your Z should move fast. That should be the slowest part of your bed, because the slower it is, and the more minute movements you make, you'll have a better layer. You'll have more layers uh, and more details, versus having big jumps in it and having big, bumpy layers. You don't want that. Uh, the smoother, the slower, the less moves you have, you make a finer layer, which is what I want. The Y and the X should be hyperspeed. The bed should be turtle speed. As usual, keep your parts in a plastic bag for different sections. That way you know what you have and all the screws should be in the parts already so you're not short screws because you don't start building and be short of screw. Okay, so I'm going to lay them out. Make sure I know where everything goes. I'm sure you do too. So, all right. So we put the first screw in and then we use our needle, needle nose pliers to hold the screw and put it in the hole inside the mount over here. Uh, you push it in, drop it in, tap it in, hold it down with your finger like so, and put the uh, V nut over here and align them up so the sideways so they fit. Yeah, twist them like this, They're nice and even parallel. Okay, now you can screw them in with your M4 screwdriver. Now, quickly notice my 2040 uh, extrusions, the long ones on top, straight on the corners, uh, the position they're in right now. Okay, that's going to come into play in a second over here. Look at them, the way they're facing. All right, so anyway, before I get into that, let's talk about this motor mount over here. Line them up, put only two screws, the two bottom screws only, um, and just loosely tighten them up a little bit this way um, once you get them both in and it's sliding back and forth we're gonna go for the second smooth rod holder now this whole video should only really be about five minutes but a lot of things came up that I spoke to a lot of users that happened to them and it also happened to me so I need to show you what happened uh, once they have this uh, smooth moving back and forth I'm gonna show you my mistake that I had uh, the mistake was that the extrusions are facing the wrong way. Uh, the 20 side should be facing you, the skinny side, and the flat side should be on that side over here, so I can put these two screws on the two slots. Uh, so I had to take everything apart and fix that. Ah, So I did that. That took about an hour, and so I restarted everything from here on. And so my cat wants to help out cat move. Move cat. All right. Cat. Go. Go. Thank you. Okay. So now I'm going to line this up 
and I'm going to show you some other things that happen um, coming up. All right, for instance, right over here, you see the smooth rod spacer. I thought you did one on the left and one on the right to center the bed. That's not the case. What you want to do is take these smooth rods here, uh, mounts, and push it all the way to the right, and then tighten it, and then do the same with the left-hand side, and uh, move it to the le left, and then tighten that one down so it's secure. Uh, the extrusion board, if you can take a look at it right now the way it is, um, I thought it was wrong. It took me an hour to figure out that I was correct. This is the right way of mounting it. The reason why I was confused was because of the manual. When you look at the manual over here, look at the bar. Um, it looks like it's going across. Okay, so now I have a smooth rod on the right side. I'm going to put another smooth rod over here and place it into the hole. And I'm moving the bottom mount uh, to get it aligned okay so once that's pretty okay i'm going to tighten these side screws i think these are m3 screws uh with m3 nuts that should keep it kind of secure to do the other side i have to lift the bed up and tighten it that way there's no other way to do it unless you have really small screwdrivers okay so now that's pretty secure so now we work on the top part so now we're going to make these tight but enough to make sure that it's uh straight and parallel up and down uh, you don't want it at an angle or skewed because that will be bad for your prints and it'll get kind of like sticky and jammy. So once we get that done, the next step we do after this is quickly give it a test to see how smooth it feels. And then what I'm going to do next is to flip it over so I can do the bottom top part, which is actually the top part, to make sure that's aligned and loosen and tighten it so it is a really smooth finish here. So we tighten this last part up over here. Once you get a screwdriver in, it's kind of awkward position over here, but once you get it in, you can do it. It's not that big of a deal. Anyway, as I was saying, yeah, so this video is played with uh, lots of issues. The first thing was my chip card reader uh, broke down. I had to order a new one that took four days to come from Amazon. Some other things uh, messed up, like my Adobe Premiere Pro. I installed a new one and it was not working. It was crashing a lot, a lot, a lot. And then my proxies was not working in that. So I couldn't edit any videos for about a week. Uh, so that's already like nine days. I'm supposed to have a video out every seven days. And then I had to reshoot some new parts because some things came up that I spoke to some other users that happened to me. It also happened to them. And I had to show that. So I had to recreate that so you can see what the issue was and come up with some solutions. And then after that, I found a third solution. I'll show that coming up. So anyway, right now, this uh, thing is looking pretty solid, pretty good. Everything's, you know, in place. And right now I should be almost done. All I need to do is a Z rods and bada bing, bada boom. Uh, Bob's your uncle. I should be finished in about another minute or two. Well, no, here's a little problem over here. Remember when I was doing this? Do you see that there? Okay, and do you see this over here? The rods are sticking up kind of far up. And what's gonna happen is the X carriage and the gantry are gonna bump into that. That's sticking out way too far. Now, the reason behind this is the Tronxy comes with five 24 millimeter um, smooth rods. The build calls for 500 millimeter smooth rod so this is technically 24 millimeters too long well there's a couple of solutions for that now let me go over them with you the first one is to order the rods online through amazon it's 19 dollars for two rods so four would be 40 bucks and if you order the bearings that'll be like around 18 dollars and that would cost you about 60 bucks in total uh, a lot of people have opted for this or they've ordered from AliExpress and they paid $9 for four rods, but $37 for shipping, maybe a little less sometimes. People have done that too. Or the second solution that people have done too is cut their own rods from the smooth rods. They take the smooth rods that came with the Tronxy and cut it down to the correct size by using an angle grinder or a miter saw. Uh, this takes a long time. This guy took about 10 minutes per rod, at least, or more. If you have a hacksaw, that's going to take you an hour per rod, at least. Um, but if you have the tools, great, more power to you. I don't, so that's not for me. But I did come up with a solution that will take you maybe five minutes at the most uh, to solve it. And you'll be good to go. And you can use the 524 millimeter rods uh, with no problem at all. So let me show you how I did it. 
Don't forget about our 500 subscriber giveaway to win a free roll of filament. All you gotta do is leave a comment and subscribe. We're almost there. Only 80 more left till the giveaway. And also, the cat will get a treat too. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna measure the distance from the bottom to the top by using my calipers this way. And once I get that measurement, I'm gonna note that number down to make sure that my idea is gonna work. So that's about 22 millimeters. Okay, so um, I'm gonna put feet on the frame and I'm gonna measure that out. That is 17 mil, 17 plus whatever. It's more than enough that I need. Okay, so this is how we're gonna do it. First of all, I'm gonna put this underneath and make sure it looks good. And my cat, you know, is not moving. And by the way, that sound you hear is my cat's water bowl uh, making a noise. So from this point on, I am gonna turn off the background microphone because I have the wrong microphone right now and uh, mute that. All right, so I'm attaching the feet with a uh, V-nut lock nut and a screw. With the cat, come on, stop. People ask me why it takes me so long to make these videos. All right, so we're gonna take the smooth rods out and the other one. And then once we do that, we're gonna lift the bed up and we're gonna put something underneath it to support it because I still have it attached to the other side. But in the meantime, I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm gonna do here. You see the bottom of this? I'm gonna take this drill bit, that's a four millimeter drill bit. You can use a five, five maybe even better, and just drill through that. I'm using my screwdriver because um, I didn't feel like getting my drill out and it'll work, it'll work. I'm gonna make a little hole going straight down, all the way down all the way through and that's it okay i have to clean it up a little bit because it's going to be a little bit tight so i'm backing it okay so the hole looks pretty good uh we're going to test it out put the smooth rod in and see how that fits it's feeling a little bit tight i can't get it through there's something blocking it so uh in the meantime i'm going to drill a hole on the other side so i can do two holes at a time instead of this one and uh looking on the underside if i flipped it over i'm going to get an exacto blade and it'll just take me just a few minutes just to clean that up a little bit and that looks pretty good. I'm gonna take my smooth rod and see how that fits. And that looks like it's going to go through. So, boop, there you go, Bob's your uncle. And now tap the top, make it go down. And boop, just like that, it goes down. I actually, I pulled it down. Um, Tap that one down just to make sure it goes through. And then I pull it down manually and just twist and turn. And there you go. So what I'm going to do now is it has a little thing popping up. I'm going to use my fingers and smooth that out in a second here. But that's looking pretty good. So, yeah, I'm going to pop that down and I'm going to tighten these screws up so it stays in place. Um, and once that's done, now what's shaking here is not the frame. That's my little rickety... Uh, camera holder here so that's what's shaking it's not the frame itself but you can see how much space i have in the bottom um and if i move it up a little bit that'll be perfect right about there it's smooth on top and i have clearance in the bottom and so i'll tighten those screws up too so it doesn't move and it's secure in place and i'll be totally done with this and that's it that's how i fix that there's also this way and what you do is you look for this part that I did not see or I did not print or was not available at the time I printed my parts out. But this is made for the uh, 524 smooth rods. They're shorter, uh, flatter, they're not as long, and they'll make your rods fit without cutting or drilling whatsoever. But you know what? It looks great, but I don't need it. Okay, we got the two screws back over here for the motor mounts loose. Uh, we want to keep them loose for now and also the M3 screws for the motors uh, loose. And we'll mount those later on. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our calipers and measure the difference between the distance. I'm sorry. Measure the distance between the smooth rods right over here all the way to the edge. Okay. Now, once you have that number... We're going to take our calipers and divide the 157, uh, and that should be roughly around 78.75 or 7850. Um, and we're going to put that on the calipers, lock it down, and then measure the center now. 
So this is the exact center and I'm making a little tiny scratch. See? Just a little scratch. I'm gonna mark it just in case also. Now this will be your exact center uh, for measuring later on. So what we do now is we take our calipers and we measure the motor mount for the Z rods. And that's 84 point something. That's gonna perfectly accurate, but close enough. Okay, 84.21. So now we take those numbers and we write them down because I'm really bad at math. 84 um, point 21 and divide that by two, and the answer will be is 42.10. So now we got to find the center of the motor mount, which is pretty easy. So you set it up for 42.10, 42.11, same thing. Get the edge over here, and like we did with the rods over here, you put it close, and you know we'll try and do a little mark to make sure it's lined up. Yep, and then we're gonna line this up on the center middle part of the motor mount, and make a little dot over there. And you can do a little scratch if you want. I can see where that is, so I'm good. All right, so now we're gonna drop the top nuts on top like this uh, and slide them underneath the uh, screw mounts and you can wiggle this back and forth. Remember, we already have a measurement, so wherever we move, we're good, okay? So once you get that thing centered over the hole and then we put the screw in to tighten it up, make sure the markings we made are all lined up before you fully tighten them up and then we'll do the two top screw mounts and then the bottom one on the side. Now we put the four motor uh, screws in. They're M3s. Uh, and then to get the other two, we'll just lift this up. Stick one and two, and we should be good to go. Okay, so now the next step is to face which way the wiring is going to go with the motor. Uh, so I'm going to put mine facing to the uh, right. And I'm going to put a little kickstand over here so it doesn't come crashing down on my hands. Uh, the bed plate and we tighten these screws all the way around we just keep tightening until they all feel pretty good okay so once this is done the next step is the couplers uh, these are the bendy kinds you want to put it right against the motor flat side and put a grub screw in there uh, so it doesn't twist around uh, make sure it's even and push it all the way in and then there's another screw on the side and uh, we're going to tighten that up until it's really tight because we do not want this shifting or moving at all. Uh, there's a couple different types of uh, couplers out there. There's also the Oldham one, which are about like $30, $32 for a set. Uh, they're pretty good. But, you know, I think if I had to spend more money on these uh, couplers, I got these free because they're in a kit. Uh, I think I'd rather go for a... Um, motor with a uh, z-rod oh by the way notice how i have the nut over here kind of loose because i want it to fall naturally and then once it gets into the correct position then i'm going to tighten all these screws on the nut up here okay so i'm going to keep it loose so it's not forced in a certain position um there's enough wiggle room there but anyway uh i would prefer a one piece motor with a z-rod some people say oh i don't want those because you know they can bend or they can come bent. Um, I gotta say, it's pretty hard to bend these things. You know, they're pretty solid. Uh, all right, so once you get in the thing here, tighten those up, tighten all the nuts up over here, and you're good to go. So, yeah, I mean, there's a bazillion cruisers out there with these motors uh, with the built-in Z-Rod. Um, and right now, I'm tightening these up, by the way, upside down. So it's all the way to the top, but the top is down to the bottom. And that way you have a really good, you know, levelness uh, at the top or where your print head starts, where your print starts. So I'm making sure everything is super tight now. So, you know, you have these cheap couplers, you have the old hams, and if I can get my hands in a one-piece motor with a Z-Rod, I would go for that, you know, because that thing's going to be super straight and, you know, it's great. Anyway, I want to get into more details about couplers and 
one piece motors with z-rods and things like that but we're running out of time over here i want to get this video out to you guys uh sorry about All right, so we're going to talk about the gantry next week. 